Hi there, I'm Mr. Leonzo. I'm one of the math teachers here at Golden Valley High School. And for Hispanic Heritage Month, I want to share with you guys a little of the country where I was born. I was born in Guatemala, which is a country that is south of Mexico. I lived there for about nine years, the first nine years of my life. I was born in the city of Quetzaltenango, which is within the state of the same name. You guys can see it right here. That is Quetzaltenango State. And in there, there's Quetzaltenango City. Now, the flag of Guatemala is represented with white in the center and blue at the sides. The representation of those colors is the purity between two oceans. Guatemala is a country that is in between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. So that's why it re represents the purity, the white in between the two blues. Our bird, it's a quetzal. A quetzal is a beautiful bird. Not only beautiful, but it is free. It, is, it has its freedom. You cannot catch a quetzal. If you're able to catch a quetzal out of sadness, it will die within a day. That's why we have that bird representing our freedom because it is free. Not only we have a quetzal as a national bird, as a matter of fact, the money that we use in Guatemala, it's called quetzal. It is in representation of our bird. And our tree is la ceiba, which is a beautiful tree, a national tree. And for music, we love marimba. You guys can hear marimba in the background. You're listening to Luna de Xelajú, which is one of my favorite songs. As a matter of fact, I own a marimba. In one of my trips to Guatemala, I brought a marimba back. I have it in my living room to represent my Guatemalan roots. Guatemala is not only beautiful from what I'm showing you here, but also on the structures. We're known for colonial structures. Not only the structures are colonial, yet they are colorful. This picture, as you guys can see, it is taken in Antigua, Guatemala, but you can see the color in the houses, you can see the buildings, the structure, and look at the streets as well. Very, very colonial. Not only in Antigua, Guatemala, but it is also in Quetzaltenango, the city where I was born. This is downtown Quetzaltenango. You see the beautiful structures. One of the cool things about Guatemala is the weather. When it's cold, it's like in the 50s. 50s is already cold. When it is hot, it's getting to high 70s. That's considered hot. So we're with between 50s and 70s year long. So that is why Guatemala is known as the country of the eternal spring because the weather is spring weather all year long. The outfits that our indigenous people wear represents the state where they come from. You guys see the colorful outfits that our indigenous people have, but People that are in Guatemala, people that are more familiar with everything that's going on in Guatemala, they will know exactly which state these ladies come from. Because it, a, each outfit represents a different state. Now, the one that represents the state of Quetzaltenango, it's the one that you guys see in the center. That lady is representing the outfit that is from Quetzaltenango. I'm not too familiar with all the outfits. Like I said, I, I lived there only for nine years, the first nine years of my life, but... I know the one from Quetzaltenango is the one in the center. When it comes to food, we have many dishes that we enjoy. One of the common dishes that we have is called garnachas. Now, garnachas are very easy to find. You guys go to Guatemala, any park downtown, you guys will be able to find it. As a matter of fact, here in Los Angeles, there are some restaurants that have garnachas. You guys can go downtown LA and look for garnachas and you guys will be able to find them. Not only we have uh, garnachas that are not common here but we also have what we call paches you guys see it on the top right paches are made out of potato we also have some tamales that have the same shape of a, same shape of a pache the only difference is that paches are made out of potato and tamales are made out of rice you guys have heard the word tamales before you know mexican tamales but those we call chuchitos. We also have those, but they're called chuchitos. If you go to Guatemala and ask for tamal, this is what you're gonna be getting. It's just gonna be made out of rice instead of potato. But be careful what you ask for. Another thing that we have, another dish that we have is called hokom. Now hokom is used for only special cases, like weddings, for example. So matter of fact, when I got married, I marry, my, my wife is Mexican, Mary, Mexican. Now we incorporated in our wedding, we incorporated both cultures. We had mariachi. I love mariachi, but that's Mexican music. But we also had hokum. I brought in the food. So we united both traditions. And my wedding was Mexican Guatemalan. Now, one of my favorite dishes in Guatemala will have to be fiambre. Oh, fiambre, I cannot even tell you what's in it. Besides, there's a lot of stuff in it. 
Now, fiambre, we only eat it once a year. This is eaten only for Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. So this is only that day, but oh, man, it's it's awesome. All I can say is it's great. Now, another thing that we have for Dia de los Muertos is the big, big kites. This is this picture was taken in San Pongo, but you guys can compare the kite, how big the kite is compared to the human beings that are right below it. Now, what we do for this with this kite is we fly them up. We fly and fly them up. Like I said, we do it only for Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. It is in representation of bringing the kites way, way up high up to heaven because we have our loved ones up in heaven. So people send them messages. Let, it, let them know that we still love them. So that's the representation of these big kites. They fly way, way high. So they're huge. These kites are huge. So that's one of the things that we do for Dia de los Muertos. A big tra another event that we have that is big is what we call Semana Santa, Holy Week, the week before Easter. Now, it is a Catholic uh, celebration, and it's huge. Guatemala is very, very Catholic. And this, this event is for a week long. There's many, many processions. We call this procession. There's many of them. I gladly take part of one of them. You have to be a member of a church group. Now, this is the one I'm part of. I, I just showed you one picture from Antigua, Guatemala, but this one's from Quetzaltenango. I am part of San Juan de Dios. That's the group I'm part of. That's the church I, I belong to. You guys can see me right there in the center. I'm carrying right there. Now, we're 60 people on each side. In my case, we're about 60 people on each side. We are about three groups. So don't think I carry all day long. We start about 8 in the morning. We finish around 3 p.m. And we take turns. Like I said, we're about three people. Now, the weight, it feels like we're carrying about 70 pounds each. Sometimes uh, the, the top, it's changed every year. Sometimes we have actually had water fountains. So you guys can imagine water is heavy. We carry it. So like I said, for you guys to have an imagination, uh, uh, an idea of what we carry, it's about 70 pounds. So we carry that for blocks. And like I said, from 8 to 3, we take turns. And that's our event. Now, if you guys ever get a chance to go to Guatemala, I know you will enjoy it. 